Welcome back to Road Race Retro. In this episode, we pay a visit to the absolute lunatics at AK Track Road and Race. So, a little update. Obviously, that's the car loaded there now. Um, our good friend from IP Recovery is going to take this one up. Obviously, in the other video, the car was sitting practically on the bump stops. So, we've lifted it up, made some adjustment to the coilovers at the back. Um, the guys that we have chosen to do the suspension setup are AK Automotive, Track, Road and Race. Um, quite a reputable company, good friends of mine that I've known for quite a long time. And uh, Dan and Fraser at AK are going to set this one up. Um, a little bit of background on these guys, they were predominantly MX-5 specialists and built some wicked cars, some very competitive cars. And they actually run their own cars in the Junetta Race Series. Um, they set, obviously, all of their own suspension up. Um, they have series winning cars, so these guys know what they're doing, and this is going to be corner weighted. And then those guys obviously also have a dyno. So, as we know, obviously, the forged engine in this particular car now has done 750 miles, it was run on mineral oil, then at 500 miles, that was dropped out. Um, it's had it serviced at 500, then it's had it serviced at 750. So, the way that we're going to basically do this is we're going to get this set up now. Um, I'll show you inside because we've put the harnesses and stuff in the passenger seat. So obviously the harnesses are in there now, passenger seats in there, nice, so we're looking good in there. But yes, once it's set up, we are then going to do some road miles before map. These guys at AK obviously have their own dyno and tune their own cars, so what we're going to do is, once it comes back out of there, they're going to put it on their dyno. We're going to check everything, check the base map, make sure it's got the right amount of air and fuel, and just make sure everything's doing what it's supposed to. And then we'll do some test miles on the road, and then down to AFI to get mapped. But yes, that's it today going up to get set up with IP recovery. I think a quick video in, obviously the cars up at AK Automotive, the lads have already done the roll and roll to make sure it's right. Got it all set up and this is the kind of stuff that the boys have. Do you know the race series car? And this is their absolutely unreal MX-5 which they've owned twice. I'm only going to do a short video while I'm here but we hate the date to collect the uh, Meg anyway so there she is. Both the lads and obviously to be fair this is probably going to overshadow the video on my shower of shit when you look at this thing. Um, listen, Let's not mess about. I've been looking at this car for the last half an hour and it, I just feel excitement in my belly. It's honestly, I've never seen anything like it. It is so rad. And the way that they built this thing is just, it's scary. You can't imagine the man I was. I mean, look at the fabrication work and everything alone. I've just asked them about this here because I didn't know what it was. And basically, this is like another electronic external water pump. When you pull into the pits for a race series, you have to knock the cars off and what he's saying is when they knock the cars off the water pump stall and it can cause them to boil over so they put the water pump in there which I didn't know what that was. Put like, just look at it. I've never seen anything as mad in my life. Obviously the lads up here, look them up, obviously AK Automotive or AK Track Road and Race. Uh, these guys obviously run the Genetta Race Series and they do know how to build a car. I mean, apparently I'm not allowed to show you underneath. There's some freaky shit going on underneath which they've developed which they don't want anybody to see. So I can't go underneath the car. But that door, wow. It's like a cardboard, it's so light. It's running Cyvex this as well. Engine wise, this is going to be going into a race series, the lads are saying. So, power wise, I think it's capped at about 320. But with the turbo, the engine build, uh, the blower, and everything's capable of 600 horsepower. And they reckon the car will flow 600 horsepower, no problem if they want to go that far with it. But I just thought I was missing an opportunity without showing you it. The video is worth watching just for that. I cannot wait to see this thing finished. Mental. Just a little bit on the end of this video to wrap this next episode up. So we've basically got the car back from AK Automotive now, got it back to the unit. I should have videoed it, I actually drove the car back to be fair. 
I was a little bit of a little bit of a ninny with it. And I just kind of steadied away. Obviously, with a fresh build, at the end of the day, Dave's amazing at what he does. Trust the car 100%. But with it just being built, I just wanted to kind of go steady, make sure everything felt all right before actually completely unleashing the beast and going berserk in it. So, um, so far, so good with this. On the road, it is amazing. Honestly, I, I can't tell you how positive the suspension and the turning feels in the car. It is absolutely solid. It's so stiff on the road, but you know something what really, really surprised me with the car more than anything else? When Dave was putting the car together and we were sitting having a chat and stuff, we both said the same thing. We said, oh, it's going to be horrible. It's going to be creaky. It's going to be loud. But you know something? We've built the car that sturdy and that stiff. Inside the car, you can hear a pin drop, which I'm massively surprised with. I expected some creaking from the cage. I know the cage won't move about because that'll be solid, but any day, it's a French car. We expected a bit of noise inside, but it's absolutely silent. We're literally finishing a few bits off today, so I'll flip the camera around and I'll, I'll literally show you. So we've ordered a... It's a bit mucky in there at the minute, so excuse that. But um, we've ordered a rear bar and cargo net. Obviously, with the way the car's set up and stripped out, we're not going to be able to run a pass ourselves. And, and obviously, when we go away at the likes of the ring and the track days, we are going to want to carry our helmets and stuff. So we've got that cargo net so we can put stuff in the boot area and not have it rolling about. Um, obviously, when I drove it back, we had the belts in, but not fully installed. So we're literally on putting the belts in now. These were a five-point harness, but we're going to run them as a four. So we're literally just bolting them in now. Um, what I'll do is I'll knock off here Put the back round I'll knock off here and this will be the last of this particular episode But what we'll do is next will be when the exciting stuff starts to come So the next videos that we do on the McGann It'll basically be us doing some road miles um, As I said in the previous videos If you've watched the series, great If not, do go back to the channel and catch up On the, the mega build of this car from start to finish From where we were at the start of these series Up to this point Um we feel like we've achieved a lot and the cars come on a hell of a long way so have a look at the previous series if you're just watching this for the first time and have a look at the car that we've actually put together so yes obviously the next couple of episodes will be basically us on the road we'll be testing the car the brakes the turning making sure the suspension's right obviously we've had the car geoed and we have had the ride height set up but it is still sitting quite low don't get me wrong once the car's on track the ride height will be absolutely perfect but we do want to do road miles in the car as well so we might need to change the ride height just a little bit so we'll we'll bear with it for there but yes thanks for staying tuned this is the end of another episode with the Megan RS250 Forge build and we are getting towards the genuine road test now so look forward to it to be honest obviously I haven't really driven the car and we get a chance to basically well see the fruits of our labour basically and see if it does what it, it thinks we're going to do and it's supposed to do the way it feels at the moment I think it'll be every bit of what we expected um, even at 305 horsepower basically got the guys to put the car on the dyno and just check and make sure all of the air and fuel was right and we were getting the right amount of boost and it wasn't under any strain obviously it is on a genuine base map at the moment it's mapped rich at the top end and uh, we've pulled the torque right out of it so we're only running 284 foot pounds of torque at the moment which is, is baby figures for our RS250 especially forged one but we just wanted the safety aspect of it but even running the 305 horsepower now on the low torque figure, it actually still feels rapid. It goes really, really well. So we're going to have, we'll probably be running, this is a complete estimate, probably around 450 foot-pounds of torque. So in terms of the torque figure, that'll, that'll nearly double when it's tuned, which will it'll be a great feeling. Obviously, horsepower will probably be 50 or 60 horsepower up on where it's at now as well. So, yeah, stay tuned. The next one will be the road. But, uh, yeah, we, we're happy. We, we're getting there now. Belt will be in today. And it's all good.